Hello, beautiful community. We'll keep this under five minutes. A couple of you have asked me to comment on Putin's comments on Trump and Musk at a Far East economy forum. So let's do it. When it comes to private business, Musk is, says Putin, without doubt an outstanding person. One has to admit that. I think everybody would admit that all around the world. He is an active, talented businessman. A lot of a lot of things work out for him, including with the support of the American government. Think of Putin thinking of Musk, not as a Russian asset, but as a helpful enemy, a constructive enemy, um, in the sense of uh, an enemy who has fallen for Putin's propaganda. The Biden administration is scared of nuclear war. And that's been a central part of the US policy on Ukraine and of the story about how Ukraine has got the weapons it's got and the other support it's got. So the Biden administration is, I would say, not hyper conservative, but conservative around the threat of nuclear escalation. But that's not where Musk is. Musk is much more scared of Russian nuclear threats than the Biden administration is. And what Putin is hoping for is that his central tool in international diplomacy, which is nuclear blackmail, works. And it's a kind of illogical turn of history that it seems not to be working particularly well so far. I mean, it's true to say that it has worked, right? It's absolutely conditioned how the West has responded, but it's not working in anything like the way Putin would like. So why isn't everybody thinking like Elon Musk about this um, and um, expressing great caution, translating it into policy about avoiding World War Three? So Musk is what um, Putin would like to see, right, in all the offices of state in major Western countries at the level of um, a hyper-conservative fear of Russian nuclear escalation. So he's not quite a Russian asset. He is an enemy who, who um, inadvertently plays to the Kremlin script on this key issue of nuclear blackmail. On Trump. Everything that's happening with Trump is a politically motivated persecution of one's political rival. That's what it is, Putin says. And it's being done before the eye of the US public and the whole world. They've simply they ex exposed their internal problems. And Putin goes on to say that just shows what a fake democracy they are and how hypocritical they are telling other countries how to be prop democracies. It's been Russian policy for years to um, destabilize those countries that are involved in the sanctions regime against Russia. This predates the war, the full-scale war in 2022. Now, there are two aspects to this. One aspect is we're going to try to destabilize Western democracies. The other aspect is a dogmatic faith in the inevitability of Western democratic decline, collapse, irreversible recession. Now, the way that translates into how they see Trump is that they, of course, prefer Trump to Biden in 2024 by a very, very long shot. But they see Trump not as anything like an ally, but as a kind of vehicle to generate instability in domestic American politics and detach America from sustained, coherent, uh, strategically, um, uh, um, you know, uh, compelling efforts on the international scene. Right. So that's the approach. It's Trump the disruptor, not Trump the ally that they primarily um, visualize. Now we're going to go over five minutes. Let me just say a couple of more sentences and then we're done. Mm. Putin feels bruised by Trump's first term. And, you know, with Putin, 
when you get outside of his pathologies and you get outside of his um, conceptual gaps, like his lack of understanding of the very concept of political opposition, um, when you get outside these two problems, which are very dominant for him, which is why he's so blind to making sense of the world properly, um, then his analysis does become rather sound. And his analysis of Trump to that extent is absolutely sound. It's the same as mine. Trump, Putin thinks, and I think, failed um, to generate an adequate elite around him, partly through his own incompetence, partly because a bureaucratically complex democracy doesn't let one do that easily. And um, that's why uh, Putin is skeptical about a second Trump term being radically different. Putin thinks Trump will do more damage will make a bigger mess the second time round than he did in the first time round. But fundamentally, Putin is on the pessimistic side about Trump's possibility to simply tear up, right, the US way of going on in different dimensions of policy. So that's my micro comment. Um, I know that there are a few people on this chat channel that don't even know about the existence of the main channel. In case you're in that boat, uh, videos come out on the ethics of Russian nuclear blackmail, on the dismal ethics of Russian nuclear blackmail. Um, and it's not a video about nuclear risk, actually. It's a video about the immorality of making certain kinds of nuclear threats and why we often ride too quickly over these instances when they occur, especially when they um presented by uh, people who aren't in, you know, offices of political power and strategists do this. We just think, well, that's, that's crap and BS and unlovely. But actually, there's something um, utterly ethically unacceptable there. And in that video, I argue, don't forget the words of these beeps once that regime collapses and Putin is gone. We've got to hold them accountable for the stuff they've come up with. That's here in case you haven't seen it. I'm sure most of you have. Lots of love. Talk soon.